morning, hello and welcome to this special broadcast. I'm Anusha Soni. Saudi Arabia Sports Ministry has decided to host an event that promotes and celebrates yoga. About 11 Arabic nations are participating in it. The event called the Arab Youth Empowerment Program in the country's commercial capital, Jeddah, saw various sessions and lectures on yoga and its benefits. Now, after the Western world, it's the Muslim world that has increasingly not just accepted yoga, but is also promoting it as an activity beyond religious connotations. But here in India, there are many who continue to call yoga un Islamic. Uh, now, this practice, yoga, its benefits for humankind, it indeed transcends race and religion. There are special research projects which are going on in several Western universities around yoga. Yet, the communal agenda continues its divisive tone and tenor to negate anything and everything which is about the heritage of thousands of years. We discuss on the special edition. Well, let's first tell you a little bit about this event which Saudi Arabia is uh, hosting and what exactly this event is about, what are the programs really like, what is it that is lined up. Let's have a quick check about how the Muslim world, Saudi Arabia nonetheless, is accepting yoga. The sports ministry is uh, hosting an event to promote yoga. As I said, there are 11 Muslim nations that are set to participate in it. The Arab Youth Empowerment Program in the commercial capital of Jeddah is being conducted. It has invited 11 Arab nations to come and participate in this very crucial activity. This is the first ever attempt to promote yoga in the Arabic world and more importantly, an acceptance and celebration. This event includes lectures, training, workshops, many yoga gurus are participating in it. This is an aim to introduce Arab youth to yoga and its benefits. More importantly, how good it is for mental and physical health. That's what the government in Saudi Arabia is insisting upon. Let's also take you through some voices about what was heard in India when, you know, there was Surya Namaskar, which, is, which was being done across the country or when the International Day of Yoga was being celebrated. Let's hear those voices. None other than Mr. Asaduddin Ovesi, the president of AIMIM, said that Muslims cannot pray to anybody except Allah. It was said that when you do Surya Namaskar, you worship the sun god and that's not permitted. It was said by Maulana Mustaqim Azmi, the president of Jamiyat e Ulema, that yoga is an attempt to saffronize and Hinduize education in some way or the other. One wonders what these critics have to say. Abu Azmi from the Samajwadi Party had said that it's against our religion to bow down to anyone except Allah and hence yoga is not something that Muslims will accept. Yoga Day is a conspiracy to enforce the Brahmin Dharma. Mohalana Athar Ali, who is an executive of All India Muslim Personal Law Board, had made this statement. You also have Abdul Rahim Ahmad, the president. Uh, he had said that the government has no right to make yoga compulsory because this has roots in Hindu religion. So while you now have the Muslim world accepting yoga as an established practice, as something which is great for your mental and physical health, what do these critics in India really have to say? Would they still call yoga and its benefits un Islamic? I want to take this question to our guests who are joining us on the broadcast. Professor Asif Ramiz Daudi, who is the founder of Indo-Arab Helping Hands, is joining us on the broadcast. Ambar Zaidi, who is a social activist, is also with us on the show. Maulana Masoodul Hassan Kazmi, who is an Islamic scholar, is joining us on the broadcast. We are also expecting someone from the BJP to join us in just a bit. Ambar, I am coming to you first and I want to take in your view. The Arab world is celebrating yoga. While there are many voices here in India, who would link it to religion, who would call this practice un-Islamic? I mean, clearly, I think they've got an answer today. I feel so happy and proud being an Indian. And yoga is something that, uh, though people say uh, it is something that uh, is being Hinduization of a uh, particular practice, but yoga means <clears throat> Indian. Yoga is not a school of philosophical thought. Rather, 
it is an artistic way of doing some exercises that releases the soul from uh, physical and mental gravity hmm. and it takes a step step by step towards the reality and uh, there are many other inventions and discoveries that uh, took place in india and uh, are universally accepted uh, ayurveda yoga sanskrit and uh, buddhism jainism uh, button uh, and fibonacci numbers shampoo and basmati rice and there are multiple in fact chess and binary uh, plastic surgery binary numbers and there are multiple multiple uh, inventions that i feel proud to mention here as uh, as an indian but uh, some uh, some uh, some people in india say that uh, it is something that is uh, not allowed in islam but yeah. uh, now fortunately we could uh, witness that uh, not only saudi arabia but other islamic countries and uh, arabian countries that are uh, practicing yoga but world has already accepted in being uh, like they are practicing or celebrating yoga since years and years okay. and uh, i feel so proud of uh, being an indian <laughs> professor ramesh daudi i'm coming to you i mean uh, during uh, my exposure to the western world during my education i i realized as an indian that there's so much about indian heritage that we just take for granted including yoga and this is a practice that should have been celebrated so much more there's so much research and development around this which is happening in the western world but mm-hmm. here in india there are many voices that continue to link it to a religious practice and say it is not something which is allowed under islam what would you like to tell those people well anusha what i have to say here i take it as a you know wellness sport hmm. it's something like we we should not connect this with religion as you said we have rich indian culture and heritage and if it goes uh, across the world it somehow or the other it's a moment that we should celebrate hmm. i mean i don't relate this with religion because there is niya you know in even in in uh, hadith we say that in in amal amal fil niya like the intentions are something that if you take it like for example you have the intention of uh, getting fit if you want to have some wellness and if you want to do this uh, for that reason i don't think uh, you know uh, uh, with that intention it has anything with uh, to to do with, do with the religion etc here i am in saudi arabia and i can see lots of reforms and changes because of the visionary leadership of the uh, you know prime minister here and uh, the prince uh, mohammed bin salman hmm. there are many things progressive things happening here and i have personally i uh, i do participate you know on uh, sometimes when the indian consulate here in jeddah they celebrate yoga day even the the present consul general of india mr shahid mohammed shahid alam is there yeah. we we do celebrate and we do encourage that if something of this sort is taken <clears throat> as a wellness sport there's no nothing wrong in that hmm. but i think those who who feel that you know they have some sort of you know uh, uh, linkage to to this kind of sport as a you know religious uh, act hmm. i think it's not not that fair hmm. Hmm. i believe that you know we should encourage this and with the intention that you know if i pray for example hmm. i pray with with some intention that i am going to do some sort of you know uh, uh, a farz hota hai we are trying to do that hmm. and hmm. when hmm. we do some some sport like yoga because i know the saudi yoga <clears throat> foundation uh, is here and they they do they conduct lots of programs and events nof marwai is the president and you know she she is doing this and uh, not with the intention she okay. herself is uh, i think you know so here what i believe uh, anusha that it should be taken positively and yeah. let's not take it you know we should not have any political kind of uh, you know linkage to this or even well sir this, unfortunately uh, here in india even yoga is uh, very political you get very political statements about it right. but you know uh, th- this is some kind of conspiracy to hinduize education those are the theories that we hear in uh, i've also got shaina nc of the bjp joining us on the broadcast shaina thank you so much for joining us on the show i'll come to you in just a bit malana kasmi sahab you've heard the views of the panelists on the show the muslim world is accepting and celebrating yoga what stops a certain section of you know people from a certain community when they call it un-islamic do you believe yoga is un-islamic no first of all uh, we uh, saudi arabia ji saudi arabia should not be an example for us we accept yoga hmm. uh, the vast majority of muslim accept yoga but not because of the saudi arabia hmm. saudi arabia doesn't approve the darga 
Saudi Arabia doesn't approve the doesn't approve the Shia Shia sects. Saudi Arabia also doesn't approve the Barelvi sects. And fortunate we are we are very much we are very much proud that our India is cradle of all sect of Islam all. Uh, all sect of Islam in our India. Hmm. So we don't follow Saudi Arabia. Hmm. We, the, our co panelist was referring to the changes in Saudi Arabia. My good friend, the big change in Saudi Arabia will be the democracy. You, we should also talk about Saudi Arabia, the exploitation of the Indian workers. Hmm. They, are the, they are the wages. Look, look, they are the daily in their pay, yeah. payment, payment of their salaries. And no, Malana Kasmi sir, Malana Kasmi sir, I I appreciate yeah. you making these yeah. broad points, but I also want you to speak about certain section of people here, and I enlisted their names in the beginning of the show, who continue to call yoga an an Islamic practice. Professor Daudi, I'm not able to hear you. I'll just come back to you in a bit and take in your view. Malana Kasmi, what do you have to say about those people here in India who call yoga an Islamic? No, yoga. Yoga is not an Islamic. Yoga is a uh, yoga is an exercise, like an exercise in is namaz. One, but in yoga there are some mantras. Some oh, oh, so some some mantras are there. So we say the intention. We should when we perform yoga, we should say Allahu Akbar. We should say Allah. We should say Lai Lai Allah Muhammadur Rasulullah, and it is enough. And I also am very confident in Saudi Arabia type of yoga. There is no Surya Namaskara. There are no mantras. So this type of yoga, no problem with that. Problem is that when you are going to make yoga compulsory in schools, hmm. then the, the raw mind children hmm. will accept the Surya Namaskara. Surya Namaskara is not allowed in Islam. But when the... Uh, when an adult, when a, when a right-minded person will make Surya Namaskara, will make the uh, yoga... So, Malana sahab, Malana sahab, Malana sahab, I, I want to understand, I'm, I'm a little appalled by your argument, but I want to understand, what kind of influence would it have on the mind of a child if a child performs Surya Namaskar in a school? What kind of ill effect will it have on the child? I'm curious. Surya Namaskara is, is, is a very separate matter. Namaskara means... To prostrate, uh, to prostrate before the Surya, to prostrate and the prostration, bowing down, is not even allowed even for, before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Islam. We Muslim only prostrate, we Muslim prostrate, we Muslim only bow down, we all, we Muslim only make sajda, naman. Before our God, Allah, isn't, isn't, who is creature of all the things. I, I, you or anybody, Surya. sir, have, have a right to have your own religious views, but isn't that a very superficial reading and understanding of Surya Namaskar? Shaina NC, you want to come in there? You have the world, the Muslim world, the Western world, which has not just accepted yoga, but is also celebrating it. Why do we continue to hear such voices here in India, which call yoga or Surya Namaskar un-Islamic? So I don't understand how any form of exercise can be Islamic or un-Islamic. Yes, Professor Dawdi, I'll come to you. Being healthy and a healthy mind hmm. and a healthy soul is the only way forward for humanity. So yoga has been a contribution of India to the world economy. Yoga has been a contribution not just to fitness enthusiasts, but a reversal of people suffering from multiple illnesses, be it diabetes, be it mental stress, be it obesity, and many, many more. So I don't think that the Islamic uh, fundamentalists or the so-called Samaj Ke Thikedar should take on this as their prerogative to give explanations towards. Mm -hmm. Whether it is a Surya Namaskar or a simple Asana or a Pranayam, these are all helping the individual and the individual's human um, uh, sustainability. Hmm. So if yoga has contributed world over, leave it to the people of Islamic countries. Hmm. Leave it to people of different thoughts and beliefs hmm. if they want to practice or not. Hmm. Nobody is shoving it down your throat and saying that you have to do Surya Namaskar or you have to chant. But if you choose to, let it be your personal prerogative. Hmm. Why do we need to get religion into this space is my limited point. All right. Uh, Professor Daudi, you had a point to make. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, Anusha, what I have to say, we should not forget, I was listening to one of the co-panelists, hmm. and uh, we should not forget that India and Saudi Arabia has a very strong relation, historical relation, and which is evolving and increasing and, uh, you know, taking greater scales and heights day after day. We should avoid ourselves, uh, you know, especially if one of the panelists is saying that, you know, in the internal matters, he should not take it in a political way. Think about, I mean, change your thoughts, man. You should not be, you know, interfering in others' matters. And here, when it comes to yoga, for example, hmm. you know, or any other progressive thing that is happening here, hmm. look at the brighter side of that as well. Hmm. And don't link each and everything with religion. Hmm. Try to think positively. And here, when they do any anything of this sort or anything is happening, look at the visionary leadership of this place hmm. and don't forget that we are around 2.5 million indians working here and helping our families and getting jobs and having a, hmm. you know, hmm. trying to do something hmm. that the relationship increases hmm. so i have a stronger objection if any of the panelists is having any kind of comments on the internal issues of the country which is a friend of india all right China, is one thing China. As I, I want to cut across to Shaina NC as well. Shaina, while while it is true that uh, yoga is a practice is much beyond the concept of religion or any kind of dogmas, that's the position. But when cannot deny that its existence, proudly so, lies in the Sanatan Dharma. Uh, it has religious roots. There are ways, mantras, asanas, which are inspired by the religious texts. Why should we disown our heritage and history to appease a certain section of people? We absolutely shouldn't. And that's my point. Yeah. That we don't need to appease anybody. Anybody who realizes the benefits of yoga should do it on their own accord. Mm. I'm so glad that the international world community is taking yoga so seriously. Because the benefits of yoga and as a proponent of yoga and somebody who's organized yoga by the day for eight years now, mm. uh, ever since the Prime Minister started International Yoga Day, I, I think that the benefits have been so immense that you see people from different caste, creed, community, even the international. Um, so are we going to question when the international world community who are majorly uh, Christians choose to be a part of the yoga festivals and yoga yeah. as a as a uh, as a uh, sporting activity or as a healthy activity? No, they don't. Hmm. So why make it different for uh, Islamic uh, countries that are choosing? to hmm. propagate something which is in the interest of humanity. That's hmm. my limited point. You have so many yep. proponents world over who are Christians who have been, uh, you know, yoga teachers themselves and teaching yoga to whether it's in South Africa, South America, America, Canada, then you name it. Amber, uh, when it even when it's you know International Yoga Day celebrations and the entire world comes together to celebrate yoga as a practice, here in India you continue to hear voices that this is some kind of a PR gimmick. Uh, you're trying to show as if you know it's under this government only that yoga is being celebrated. It was already celebrated. Even on the International Yoga Day, we continue to hear these kind of arguments coming in from certain sections of people. See, as I uh, said in the beginning also, we should always be proud of our own heritage and culture. And if uh, the world is celebrating, why should, uh, why cannot we celebrate our heritage and our culture, whatever uh, has been the inventions and discoveries of India? Hmm. If people of India are saying that uh, this, this, these are the PR givings, I feel sorry for them. Hmm. And uh, there are some people in India uh, who uh, comes out and says that it is... Uh, un-Islamic or uh, they uh, keep saying that uh, it, they, it is being posed on other people uh, mm. as it is a practice of Hinduism, which is not. It is our culture. It is a part of culture mm. and it is good for health. Why can't we celebrate and embrace our own culture and heritage mm. and irrespective of religion and caste? Mm. As mm. India, we should all be proud of our own heritage and culture. And I don't know why some people uh, goes out to you know insult their own culture and heritage and they have tendency to go against everything whichever is good for humanity they go against everything uh, 
whichever is beneficial. Malana, for Malana Kazmi sahab, that's the question I have for you. You made a very interesting point. You said don't look at Saudi Arabia because, you know, there are various things. It's not a democratic country, so it should not, it should not be example for India in any way possible. But when it comes to, uh, you know, protecting or making, making an argument for a lot of regressive practice, like when this entire debate around hijab was happening in the country, or when we talk about the reform of the Muslim personal law, the same section of people say that, look, Muslim world and the Muslim law is very, very different from the rest of the world and that's the identity we want to protect. Now, when the Muslim world at its core in Saudi Arabia is talking about reform and modernization, you want to draw a caveat there and say, look, we are not going to emulate them because they are very, very different. If it is about the celebration of Hindustania, then why not embrace something that comes from your own heritage? Malana Sab. You and uh, my co-panelists from Saudi Arabia are mis misunderstanding me. I I don't interfere in Saudi Arabia's uh, internal matter. Mm. We are proud that the Saudi Arabia is adopting the our country's yoga. We are proud of that, mm. and we are not uh, we are not against yoga. We only say that the yoga yoga should not be in our big we hope and we think yoga should not be made compulsory. In school, that is the only single point, hmm. and we approve the yoga. Hmm. We only say the Surya Namaskara is not Islamic, Surya Namaskara is not Islamic, and my co panelists will also, my co panelists will from Saudi Arabia, we may have, we also accept this fact that the Surya Namaskara is not, is not Islamic because Namaskar or bowing down to anybody or to prostrate to anything except Allah is forbidden in Islam. That is the only single point. Then, then how, try to it, it's interesting. No, 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 Malana Saab. But you, but you spoke about a lot of dargahs, peers, which are all a concept in India and in the Indian subcontinent, a different form of worship, or a diversity that exists in the Muslim culture, which is found here in India. Uh, then how can you take that regressive stand that, you know, Surya Namaskar is only about prostrating before somebody and hence is forbidden in Islam. You can't have both the arguments at the same time, Malana Saab. No, no, no. The, the bowing down, sajda karna, sar ko dhukan, tekna, matha tekna. All Islamic sex in all Islamic sex is forbidden, is not allowed, including Darga, including Shia, Shia sex, including Braille Ismi sex, including Deobandi sex. Amar Zaidi, do you want to come in? Amar Zaidi, you want to come in? Holding hands and doing namaskar, that is that has been our culture. And I every day has been holding my hand in front of every man, whichever comes, whoever comes in front of me. I, I, I hold my I hold my hand and say namaskar. That means I'm worshipping the person. No, I'm just paying my respect and I'm greeting the person. That has been my culture. So why can't we simply accept that Surya Namaskar is just a form of exercise? And we are only thanking the Surya. We are not worshipping uh, Surya. So it's no, just a, you know, it's just a perception that uh, you are uh, forcing on people's mind that it is anti-Islamic. And on yoga also, there have been different perspective and some say it's allowed and some say it's not. Blatantly say it's not, it's haram and it's not allowed in Islam. When a country like Saudi Arabia, who doesn't accept Shia or Bareilvism or uh, the shrines of Sufi and other uh, uh, scholars, they don't accept them as part of Islam. A country like Saudi is accepting yoga and pra practicing and celebrating it. Why can't we, being an Indian, can accept and uh, celebrate and embrace no, our own Malana culture? Sahib, you were making an interesting point how young minds can be influenced. Then aren't you making an argument which is very fundamentalist in nature and is likely to affect thousands of minds who are listening to you? You're a learned man. You should know that your words are going to have an impact to hundreds and lakhs no. of people who are listening to you. No, no, no. Don't try to take, uh, don't try to misunderstand me. I am saying yoga, yoga is not an Islamic. Hmm. And we also do the yoga. And we are also going, we are also going to take part hmm. on the yoga day hmm. in yoga. Hmm. But nam Surya Namaskara, Surya Namaskara, Namaskara, Surya Namaskara. I, I have only reservation regarding Surya Namaskara. Hmm. Or my, my point is that when it comes to the Surya Namaskara in yoga, hmm. Muslims should not say Surya Namaskara. They should only make intention to, to face the Surya 
to in order to attain the warmth of the surya to promote their health this is the only single point and we are not against the yoga so we don't try to quote me as professor a, professor ramiz daudi when you when you hear professor uh, maulana masoodul hasan kazmi or there are other people who talk about surya namaskar in this way and there is a completely different perception about yoga its practices different asanas when it comes to the western world and now even in the muslim world does this regressive position shock you surprise you because these are people of this own country they have the same heritage and culture no no well, you you well, can Anusha, ask i have two points to make ji uh, please go ahead. i have two points to make hmm. one thing when there is there is a kind of confusion here i mean we should not mix uh, here in terms of uh, having yoga in saudi arabia let's not mix two things like uh, Sh- surya namaskar and yoga uh, these two things are different in this context here hmm. in islam we know that shirk is haram hmm. we all know that shirk means there is no one but allah that's the only god hmm. so here whenever we do any kind of these activities as per the you know books and all it's it's not acceptable and it's haram that is one thing but when it comes to yoga when it comes to yoga the, this is not shirk or this is not something that you know it's a kind of game it's a kind of sporting activity that one can easily and i do that i tell you on a national television that whenever there is a celebration by the indian consulate here in jeddah i go there and i participate in that hmm. number 2 uh, anusha i have been living in india i mean in, in india you know since my childhood and every muslim i believe hmm. and every hindu and other you know we live in brotherhood and peace and you know some sort of you know uh, pyar mohabbat wali kind of things hmm. in that case we used to go and celebrate uh, the deepavali holi with our hindu friends and christmas with our christian friends and they used to come to have sevanya etc in uh, on eid etc uh, you know to our houses hmm. so if i go and celebrate any kind of festivals with uh, other religions hmm. i don't think that i am going to you know it, it's going to have any bigger impact on my religious belief because it is something very strong my you know, religious religious belief cannot be that small or that too 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 short i mean something that can easily be damaged by anything of this sort and unless the niya is bad as i told you the intention should not be bad and with this intention we can do that but there is a confusion here right now between two things yoga and surya namaskar hmm, anusha hmm, hmm, hmm. ambar uh, when it comes to the heritage of this country i think it's only here in india that we have this peculiar situation that you have knowledge you have heritage that the rest of the world celebrates more than you but here in india the moment you talk about yoga in schools or try to talk about making it mandatory in schools which i think would be wonderful for your mental and physical health if i was taught meditation when i was a child it's it's uh, somehow becomes saffronization of education or hinduization of education it's no more about mental and physical health I think uh, we uh, need to understand the people who has been propagating this idea that uh, our, our culture or embracing our culture is uh, following some other religion we need to understand our own culture and we should celebrate it and religion and culture are two both dif- uh, both are two different things yeah. and we need to understand them separately and uh, just like indonesia we could uh, see that uh, they embrace their own culture and we share okay. that culture with indonesia yeah. and they have been celebrating their own culture why can't we as indian muslim uh, can understand own uh, our own culture and embrace it and that china the, despite the objections that comes from the fundamentalists or the conservatives in a certain religion or any other religion there must be sustained efforts that should be made to promote yoga across the world which has been done by the government of the day when it comes to introduction of yoga at the primary level in schools what is the thinking within the government because maulana saab says don't make it mandatory in school because that will be objectionable and earlier it was said that that will be saffronization of education as well shaina your thoughts you know something that truly bothers me is every time people say this saffronization of everything hmm. i mean understand that this country has so much cultural heritage and so much to offer to the international world community now please understand yoga is not a ritual sure yoga is not a religious celebration yoga is part of your existence of being a healthier you and improvising on your mind body and soul yeah now the prime minister has made yoga so popular it's not just about international yoga day which we've all been following ever since but it's also the international world community that has understood that yoga is the only scientific way 
to reverse diabetes to reverse yeah. obesity to reverse mental health issues to reverse so many complications that one would have faced in the past absolutely if you're going to and try and this and is the heritage and and this is the heritage uh, shaina you rightly say which should be preserved at all costs a practice that originated proudly here in india well with that it's uh, a wrap from my side i'm totally out of time on the other side my colleague shivani gupta joins you with clean speak thank you for watching this sir.